everyone and welcome to our January workshop for the symptoms of overweight and obesity. Our guest speaker tonight is Dr. Dave Stender. He is the owner of Ultra Slim and a retired chiropractor here in Tucson. So, Dr. Stender, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Cheryl Lynn. So, um, let me give you my story. So, so how I got into all this, I uh, was a practicing chiropractor, had a thriving practice and uh, some things happened in my family. And my, my wife got uh, seriously ill with a uh, autoimmune thyroid condition called Hashimoto's. Anyone here familiar with Hashimoto's? Yeah, so, um, and no one was helping her. And I had resources, and I, I thought I knew what I was doing at the time, because I had a background in nutrition and health, and you know, and I loved chiropractic, and, and the other thing he did is enucleation studies. So what does that mean? Enucleation means he did what? He removed what? The nucleus. With all, and they were taught, you know, and he was a hardcore scientist. You know, they were, they, they were, they, they were uh, uh, taught to believe that this was the brains of the cell, right? Well, if you took the brains out of any organism, what's going to happen to it immediately? Die, right? Well, that's what they expected to find. But that's not what happened. It actually lived a normal cycle, okay? The only thing it couldn't do is replicate. In other words, it just go one generation. So the conclusion of those studies, and I want, you, I want this to sink in with you for anyone with any kind of health problems, the conclusion of that study is, is that it basically uh, your, your cells, your, your, your DNA, this is not the brains of the cell. Mm -hmm. This is the gonads of the cell, okay? And if you control your environment that you put your cells in through lifestyle and you know, diet or whatever it is and reducing stress, okay, then you can change the out, your, your health outcomes. But the big thing, folks, is, is inflammation. The other, but uh, take that a little bit further. The moment he interrupted the membrane, that's where you're receiving all the, the energy, that's where you're receiving all the signals from the external environment. You, you follow? So, so, so basically, the moment he insulted, they, they'd insult the membrane, collapsed and died, the cell was done. The cell membrane is where the magic happens. Regulates those hormones and do everything else. And the thing that mucks up our cell membranes more than anything is inflammation. So that leads us, well, what causes inflammation? Okay, we already talked about it, right? Stress, grains, sugars, bad fats, um, chemicals. Uh, chemicals, that's, yeah, toxic. By the way, that's, uh, that's the smoking gun. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people miss, is the toxins. The toxins are doing it, you know, everything. Leaky gut, who's familiar with leaky gut? You heard that term mm -hmm. before. Um, this is no longer just bad ideas, you know, they, they kind of came out. It's, it's now being uh, born, they, they're just finished the uh, Human Genome Project, and what they're discovering with this is amazing. You know, for instance, you can take mice, um, you know, one of the really nice little habits that mice have, or our little rodent friends have, is they like to eat feces. Okay, so, right? And, and so what they what they what they did is they uh, what scientists did is they they basically had uh, skinny mice cohabitate with fat mice. They did take the fat mice's feces and put it in the skinny mice's cage. And guess what would happen to the skinny mice? They get, they get fat. And when they did the reverse, when they put skinny mouse poop in the, in the fat mouse cage, what do you think happened That's to it. them? Yeah, it all has to do with their microbiome. There's so much stuff we're just scratching the surface with on weight loss and everything else. But you, you, you've got to identify these triggers. If you can get rid of these uh, inflammatory triggers, the big ones that I see working with autoimmune are... Um, the big ones I see at work is gluten. Uh, by the way, uh, gluten is, everyone knows about gluten, right? It's, right, Every, everyone knows about gluten. That's not even the worst one. Dairy? Dairy is, is another one 
But uh, there's other uh, wheat and grain uh, proteins that are even worse, like wheat germ agglutinin uh, and gluten aminase, and these other ones even do more damage. Uh, gluten can be linked to uh, cerebellar ataxia. It loves your nervous system. They've actually shown that wheat germ agglutinin, and by the way, we, it, it tells you where it comes from, right? Mm -hmm. Wheat germ, and we were told what. So what I tell when I when I work with people, the first thing you need to do is forget everything you learned about nutrition. Because yeah. what they've taught us and what the government has taught us is upside down. Take the food pyramid, turn it upside down, and you're closer to the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's actually criminal to me. To me, you know, they, they subsidize these industries so they promote them to put them on our plate. Mm -hmm. And the reality is they're causing massive inflammation, they're causing leaky gut, they're causing autoimmune issues and everything else. Wheat germ agglutinin will actually, uh, they actually show that wheat germ can travel up your vagus nerve. That's your 10th cranial nerve. That controls all of your, basically all your uh, organs, the, the parasympathetic nerve supply of all your organs all the way down. It can actually climb that and go up into the brainstem and, and so people that, uh, for instance, I, I, I'm not picking on anyone here, but vegetarians, I like vegetarians. I like a vegetarian diet, okay, if you eat the right vegetables. But if you're eating grains and you're eating uh, uh, legumes and you're eating these things, base, those are lectins. And if you're eating wheat germ, what it, it's really causing problems, okay? And so it'll literally climb the vagus nerve and it, they're showing that uh, vegetarians have a 40% higher rate of Parkinson's for that reason, okay? And again, I don't, you know, when people, a lot of people do, are vegetarians for moral reasons, right? And, and spiritual, and I'm, I, I don't, there's some good programs out there you can do, but you gotta avoid certain things. And you got to find alternative forms of protein and things like that. Beans are even, are even worse. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain beans that if you eat uncooked can kill a person. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, they're, they're that. think about your animals from, a, uh, from an evolutionary standpoint. You know, uh, plants came along before all of us. <laughs> plants came along before insects, millions of years before insects. You think, you think plants are dumb? <laughs> <laughs> They don't think like us, right? But, but, but they have innate, inbuilt, protective mechanisms. So these, these seeds, they're babies, they want to protect. Well, how do they do it? Through chemistry and through toxins. So these things, now, there's certain things you can eat that are lectins if you prepare them properly. I don't want to scare everyone away. But what I do with my autoimmune people, they're off of it from the first day on. Okay, and then we can maybe start doing some things and preparing it differently and adding them back in. But you want to see magic? It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife has to be on an autoimmune diet. You know, she, she has good months and bad months, okay? And, but for the, for the new year, we had, a, we had, from Christmas Day, we got on the scales, we had a contest. So I went on her autoimmune diet. Because I had been putting on, I had a little, uh, uh, taste for a certain malted beverage, that, uh, <laughs> which is about as bad as you can. So, so anyway, so I, I stopped that. I literally went totally lectin uh, 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 and, and grain free. Uh, and, and tomorrow's our weigh in, and I've already lost uh, 15 pounds. And I didn't try, and I didn't eat any less. What I tell people, you can. It's not calories. Forget about calories. If you have a healthy microbiome. Those bugs are going to eat and, and use up the, those carbs for energy. Okay, so so it's not a deprivation; it's just a, an avoidance. Okay, but but, but it works and it works really really well. Uh, so the other thing I want. Okay, so here's the other thing I wanted to cover: is everyone is doing hormone replacement, right? Okay, not everyone, but. What do you see advertised for men all the time? Do you have, do you have loads of <laughs> Right? ED or whatever that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes with yeah. yeah. Well, really what's happening is, so here, here, here's the problem, okay? You can get all the testosterone you want. You, if there's inflammation here from those foods or lectins or whatever it is, 
They will blunt those receptors. They will basically not allow those signals to get in. So uh, the inside of the cell is going, I I'm waiting for my next signal. Come on, send it in. And the hormones are going, I can't. Okay, so you yell a little louder. You, who, who here has ever yelled at their kids? Raise your hand. Yeah, you liars, liars, liars. <laughs> yeah, you can't raise your hand. Though. Great looking easel, though. Uh, but but anyway, so so, so basically. When we start giving people hormones, now there's a time and place for bioidenticals, and I, I get that, there, there really is, but there's a proper way to test for it, and there's a time to do it. But if there's inflammation here, those, the, the inside of the cell are your kids, and they're going, and you're yelling at them, and at first they go, whoa, I'm going to act on that, right? And they're going to listen to you. But if you yell at them and, uh, 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 10 minutes later, then what's going to happen? Eh. Ten minutes later, then what's going to happen? It's like, yeah. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> right? Charlie Brown. <laughs> and, and, and so they're not going to listen. And so by giving people hormones when you're already inflamed and you're eating sugars, and, and by the way, when you're taking testosterone and you have all that inflammation, so testosterone gets converted, okay? And this is for women too. You know, women produce testosterone. Right? And so it gets converted into toxic proliferative estrogen in the presence of an enzyme called aromatase. Okay? So, in other words, if you don't control your blood sugar and those blood sugar spikes, you're in trouble, okay, as a, as a man or a woman. I have a friend that went on, you know, he had low T, so he went in. This guy swam, and he was a triathlete. He kept putting on weight. Massive amounts of weight. He got head really super heavy. And, he, and, and this doctor convinced him it was because he has low testosterone. No, it was because he was eating this incredibly grain rich, uh, lectin rich diet. And, and his wife's Mexican, so he was eating lots of uh, uh, violis, right? And beans and, and, and all of this other stuff. And he kept, he put up, once he started on the estrogen or the testosterone, it was all converting to estrogen, and he was storing fat, storing fat, storing fat. Okay? This stuff's fixable. <laughs> it really is. Most of our hormone issues are due to these glucose and insulin spikes. Mm -hmm. You know, my brothers, when they, uh, you know, they were type 2 diabetics, severely uh, obese, and, you know, it, it, blood sugar uh, affects you in so many ways, and, and as does uh, thyroid, but affects you in so many ways. One brother died of a heart attack, the other died of cancer, and it's not a, it, that, that's not a coincidence, okay? So if I could tell you one thing you could do, okay, uh, to, to improve your health, the fundamental is control your blood sugar, okay? And, and uh, I'd love to see you guys, if you want to come to my talk, is. I've never done a 20 minute talk in my life. <laughs> this is really hard for me because I want to keep going. Dr. Stender, uh, so in about five minutes, uh, could we like have a question and answer yeah. period with you? Yeah, I think you got the, did you get the basics of yeah, what I'm talking yeah, So it's yeah. all about inflammation, it's about the hormone speaking inside and what causes inflammation. But yeah. Yeah, you can do so it right now if you want. We'll just, yeah. Anybody? I got one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just had my hormones tested and my estrogen was low. Right. Uh, my How? DHEA was really high. Um, I, I take a lot of natural like stuff. For, I take adrenal for my. Um, Okay. My allergies and stuff. Okay. And maybe I got a little carried away. Yeah, the DHEA, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, that comes from your adrenal uh, cortex, your DHEA, as does your cortisol. Yeah. Okay, so if you're doing things to stimulate that, that would explain it. Now, how did they test you? Blood. They took blood and did it. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm not a fan of blood testing for hormones. No. Unless it's thyroid hormone. Yeah. Okay, uh, it, 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 because it's more of a snapshot of what's in your blood at that time, whereas the, the, the bet for women, uh, does everyone remember, um, oh, not fear of fussy, um, Susan, Suzanne Suzanne Summers. Summers. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yes. she, she, the, the test that she says saved her life is the Genova 24-hour uh, female hormone panel. 
Yeah. There, there's one that's exactly like it. It's called the Dutch test. It's a year, 24 hour urine. For adrenal status, I like saliva, okay? It's, mm -hmm. it's called an adrenal stress index test. Uh, be, but because with just plain urine test, not a 24 hour, but just a plain urine test, if you're hypothyroid, which a lot of people with women are, probably more in this room that realize it, uh, then it's gonna skew the results because it's gonna look like there's not much coming out uh, uh, because that's what thyroid, hypothyroid does. So yeah, saliva or urine uh, for hormone testing is what I always suggest. Now you can glean stuff from blood, but it's to me it's it's not the be all end all. Or hair, same thing. Yeah, it same thing. Just... Yeah, it's it, it's more. So when I see people, I, I try and be as precise as possible. Oh, by the way, my easel can sit down. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Perry. Thank you. <laughs> but um, where was it? Well, I'm. Oh, no, the blood yeah, testing. Yeah, the, uh, here. So here's the, when I see someone. To me, I want to get as much information, but I want to get concise information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people to have to do any more than they have this to. This place is real big on right. hormone replacement therapy. I'm, I'm not doing that. Yeah, they're, stay they're, natural it's the, yeah, they're, they're, it, like bioidentical things yeah. like that. And now I would I would want to rely on one of those tests I talk about. Yeah. Okay. okay, before That's you before you do that? Well I won't do HRT. I mean, yeah. I well yeah, that so so yeah, there's there's a lot of problems uh, in that area. So so um, yeah, hair tests. So when people come to see me I call it investigating the crime scene. Okay? True. <laughs> right? We've got all these clues. When someone comes to see me I think of it like um, a house that has uh, multiple holes in the roof and, and we're in Seattle. <laughs> okay. If it's here, we don't care, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's Seattle, and so I gotta assess, well, where's the biggest holes? Okay, we gotta fill those first. And a lot of times people I work with have all these little holes. Yeah. And they need to be attended to, but they're not a priority. Right. So it's about prioritizing. So yeah, I'm doing a, a series of workshops. This is my thyroid now. I mean, it's kind of an overview. But then I'm going to get into uh, I'm going to get into uh, diabetes. Cognitive decline is a big area, uh, but which, by the way, by the way, brain fog and short-term memory loss are the first signs of Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. They just did a test. Dr. Bredesen, uh, he's he's a renowned Alzheimer's researcher. Uh, now has a program, and I'm going to get certified in it. Um, it's called the Recode System. They just tested. Uh, they, they just tested 100 people. 100 out of 100 had a reversal of cognitive decline. Now it's got to be. It, it, it's it's got to be early Alzheimer's or whatever. But it's very very promising. Mm -hmm. And I, and, and and he equates that to the holes. And the problem is with standard medical care. Is, is everyone's they're responsible for one hole, right? Right. Like your medical doctor is going to give you the drug that's going to, you know, do. But it's not the answer. Yeah. It's not the total answer. In fact, they're giving up on it. The drug companies are giving up. Yeah. They've literally canceled their trials on most of the drugs that they use for Alzheimer's. Third leading cause of death in the United States. Well, they say the brain is plastic. Yep. So if you feed it, like I do Sudoku and all these other things, yes. to, to keep me viable. Yes. Yeah, that's a great, so, so here's, here's what I tell you, whatever your greatest weakness is, so for, for me, like crossword puzzles and Sudoku, I, I'm very right brain. My, my, my wife is very left brain, she's very mathematical, mm -hmm. she's actually logical. You know? <laughs> so you're which you're explains logical. why I, which explains why I put in my calendar uh, the, for tomorrow night, but I did it right away, and I never checked any other dates when she said it. <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I'm a hunter, okay? <laughs> you guys are gatherers. <laughs> and, and, and so, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I really want to, you know, thank you for the opportunity to speak to this group, and I'm glad I could make it over here and beat the traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, any, anyone else? I want to answer questions. Um, yes. Uh, I have two. Sure. Um, you know the eating for your blood type, it talks about uh -huh. lectins, how does that work with what you think and also what do you think of poly-MVA? 
Poly MBA uh, I'm familiar with, but I think the jury's still out. I am familiar with it, and I've looked into it at one time. Uh, and and the, the blood type, that, that's fine, but the people I work with that are really struggling, you know what the best way to determine your, uh, uh, to test for your for, uh, sensitivity testing and for uh, what diet you should be on? An elimination diet. Mm -hmm. It's the cheapest, <laughs> okay? It's the most reliable. There's a lot of these immune tests that are out there. You, you know, the, the, a lot of false negatives, a lot of false positives. It's still not, it's still not where it should be. That's so and now, again, it could be a part of compiling information, right. but, but elimination diets are the way to go. So when I start with my people, uh, no matter where they're at, uh, avoid lectins, avoid grains, uh, you know, legumes, beans, all of that stuff. A lot of people don't want to read things, though, you know. When I go grocery shopping, I know what's in what yeah. I'm buying. Well, if there's more than two or three ingredients, don't get it. <laughs> That's a good well, start. I go to the right places first, yeah. you know. Yeah, where you shop, right, yeah, absolutely. So if you have an insulin-dependent diabetic uh -huh. that's extremely low on protein, Yep. And doctors have you taking a, a supplement, Juven, that builds the muscles and helps heal wounds. You probably have some problems. And you're dizzy and you have cognitive problems. Right. And, and, and who is this? Okay. <laughs> Lectin, lectins imitate insulin. So they dock where insulin is supposed to be docking. There's, it's like pulling up to the airport. So that's why it's not working. Okay, it's like pulling up to the airport and there's someone in your in, where the plane's supposed to deboard, right? The gate. That's there's already a plane there. So the insulin doesn't have anything to do but store fat, and that and that's how you get muscle wasting. So that's one of the known things. And, and I should I should be more specific. Wheat germ agglutinin is what uh, really mimics insulin, okay? So that's one of the first things I would do is get, get rid of that. So the, the connection between these uh, uh, inflammation, these food issues, uh, is very strong. So, so yeah, I would, have you ever done like a, because my brothers were insulin dependent too. And when, when, when you, now I, I have worked with diabetics on 120, 140 units of in, in, insulin, get them off all their medications, and, and at the very least, the, the less insulin you have in floating around your body, the longer you're gonna live. Okay, insulin's, if you wanna age faster than anyone in your neighborhood, have a lot of insulin floating around in your body. Okay, because because basically, you can't burn fat for energy. You're a sugar burner. And that's the majority of Americans, by the way, but especially with, with diabetics. Okay, so if we can't, if, if we can't turn you into a, a, a fat burner, you're going to always have that problem, but it can be done. So instead of wheat, what would you do? Rice, quinoa, etc.? No, okay, so quinoa is a seed, and it is, uh, it, it is a bad one, okay? And, and now here, uh, in, in, in Peru, yes. okay, South yeah, in South America, they, uh, they basically uh, sprout it, and they, and they ferment it, and then they pressure cook it. And, and, and so but that can take a lot of the lectins out of it. Okay, it's how you prepare it. Now that being said, rice is a grain. Don't do brown rice. That has the bad lectins in it. Wow. It's, it, what, what did I say? Yeah, what did I say about forget everything Never you learned about you nutrition? Mean. When I first learned this too, it was like, what? Yeah. You know, I was an athlete, I was a triathlete, I was a college football player, and I was always really up on nutrition and feeding my body, you know, and I worked out like crazy, and I thought I could get away with that for the rest of my life, and I realized a lot of things I were doing weren't so hot. And I was eating a low-fat diet at one time. Yeah. What about soy? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Like soybeans. Yeah, soy's tough. That, that's a, that, so soy protein, soy isolate mimics yeah. estrogen. Mm -hmm. It is a big xenoestrogen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Big xenoestrogen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, now, so like uh, organic, for, uh, like fermented, uh, sprouted uh, soy. Uh, again, you can you can get away with that. You know. Wow. Yes. Um, I can't remember the researcher's name. I don't know if you're familiar with. He was an Israeli researcher, and they did a bunch, a huge study on the microbiome. And they, they sampled all these different people, and they actually came up with an algorithm. And what they found was that people were completely different. So, you know, like you have a friend who's like, I do keto and it's great, and I do paleo yes. and it's great, and I do yes. vegetarian and it's great. And what they found yeah, was it's all true depending yeah. on your microbiome. microbiome. Yeah. So, because like I did a whole 30 diet, I did an, an elimination diet, and without brain, I couldn't function. Like, I mean, even I went through all the whole thing. And when I started introducing even yeah. just a little gluten-free grain, yeah. I was like, I felt like a human again. A lot of that too can have to do with something called oral tolerance, what the individual can tolerate. But yeah, your microbiome, you know, we're as, you know, we're as, we're so diverse and so different just based on our, our microbiome. There's a company, you might want to look into this, it's called Viome. And they can do a stool sample and basically break down everything you'd ever want to know and more about your poop. <laughs> but it's really about, you know, and by the way, it's not just bacteria. We have viruses. You know, that we can get viruses from plants and what we eat. You know, we, we don't be afraid of these bugs, okay? They, they are meant to cohabitate with us. Parasites are a big thing that I see all the time with hypothyroid. And it, because when, when our... When our digestion slows down, when our peristalsis slows down, you, these parasites have a happy home. So it's very common to have a, a parasitic in, in, infestation when you're hypothyroid or struggling with energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, protozoa. There's, there's all kinds of these little critters in us. Mm -hmm. But it's so fascinating. You know, in hospitals, uh, they, they they actually to treat uh, C diff. Is everyone familiar with C diff? <laughs> In nursing homes, right? Yeah. You know how they're curing it now? Fecal slurry. Yeah, fe fecal Did enemas. Did you know that um, athletes actually, they, they'll drink like a fecal slurry from like somebody in Kenya? Yep. My husband read it, like, yep. heard a whole thing about yep. this woman yep. who was I've a seen. long distance cyclist yep. and she couldn't find a doctor to give it to her so she just drank it. I wouldn't drink it. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Now, I might do a fecal uh, enema. If I was really sick, or they do an if I had, if, too, if one yeah. of my family was really really ill, like you know, to the point of you know no return, that that be I'd consider it. But you got the the, the problem is finding a healthy well, uh, volunteer. Joke, I'm gonna take my husband because he's like skinny and can't gain weight. I need a fecal transplant. Yeah. They, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to be said about that too. It, it, it's it's fascinating what we're finding out about the microbiome. But what have we done? So so with the uh, uh, broad spectrum antibiotics, you know, it, it have really contributed to a lot of the problems that we have today. The overuse of antibiotics. Antibiotics were great; it saved millions of lives, especially during wartime. But it has obliterated. Uh, people are going in and asking for antibiotics when they have a sniffle, which means that they probably have a viral infection. And the doctor has to give it to them because doctors are yep. rated on patient satisfaction. Yep. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Wow. Yep. And it, and it, and it, it, it is destroying our health. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, you, gotta, you gotta embrace this, the, 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 our, our bugs. Any other questions? Okay. Wow. How do we get wow. appointment? <laughs> we are so glad you came. Yeah. 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 Well, I tell you, if you yeah. have to, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Better late than never. Right? Better late than never. Yeah, so it, 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 my heart sunk when I read that, uh, Cheryl. Uh, uh, and then I went back, and I panicked, and I went back, and I looked at, at a uh, email from like a week ago, and sure enough, she had the right time in there, but I didn't look at it.
<laughs> but the first one <laughs> I tracked out, right? Yes, it's a typo. In the first <laughs> so so I, I, I thought I was going crazy. Yeah. But my wife thinks I'm crazy. Right? Well, you made it, you made it so all good. A couple things, folks. If you have any questions, if you're interested in consulting me uh, on a professional basis, call me, email me. I'd love to, you know, I, I, you know, I'll spend a few minutes talk to you about your specific concerns. But come to my workshop if you can. When is it? Is where it's Saturday. It's Saturday. It's up in Oregon. I passed it around. Yeah. Yeah. You passed it around. Yeah. And I, I just need to head count. Uh, I'm having it at, at, at our church. Um, it's a really nice setup because I got all the PowerPoint stuff. I don't need to, you don't need to come for the, to be an easel. Yeah. I'm but you can't be come that day, but oh. <laughs> I was wondering when the next one is. Well, they, I'll, I'll rent you next time. Yeah. <laughs> you said before about you know how uh, being a vegetarian affects a person. Well, my son's a chiropractor. Oh. And he attended a seminar a couple of years ago, and they took blood, little blood samples from each person that was there at the seminar, yeah. and they said. So and so and so and so are vegetarians. Yeah. They knew right away yeah. because there was something not right into the yeah. cell of the, of the yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. There could be a lot of different differences. So here, my take on it: I think being a vegetarian for short uh, uh, spurts is not a bad thing. Yeah. Or one it's day. Hot, it's or very, it's very tough to sustain long term. You can't get an absorbable uh, uh, type of B12. You can't get uh, heme iron, which is from animal protein. Uh, uh, Non-heme iron from plants is, mm -hmm. is not as absorbable. And so I see a lot of anemias. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of uh, B12 folate uh, anemias uh, with, with vegetarian, strict vegetarians. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, like I said, there are ways you can navigate around it. If you eliminate those lectins and, and you know how to uh, process certain foods and get your protein and what you can and supplement for what you can. So uh, it's, it's hard because you know, that's when, when you're, I, I personally, if I'm working with someone uh, and, and they're autoimmune, uh, I, I'd have to make sure they're willing to follow a strict protocol and maybe for like there, there's supplements that you can get that are for have heme iron in it they, they got to be willing to do that because iron anemia is dangerous it can kill them yeah you know so, so but 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 for the most part you, the the fats you get from healthy animal protein you can't replace mm -hmm. conjugated linoleic acid uh, it, by the way grass fed beef you know, we shouldn't eat too much of any kind of animal protein, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, but grass-fed beef has a perfect omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid ratio at the membrane level. Okay? What, so, so all the research you see out there, or I should say the majority of it, on the negative things with, with beef and animal products and dairy, is <coughs> it's the way what we've done to it. They're not fed the way they're supposed right. to be fed. Yeah. I mean, what do you feed? You are what the animal, what you're consuming, you are what they're eating. They're eating yeah. So in, in America, this is pretty interesting. I just read this last week. So they did carbon testing on to determine the percentage of Americans that have corn in their DNA. Mm -hmm. It's like 90%. In Europe, it's like 5%. Well, corn syrup, they don't use high fruit. Yeah, corn syrup, yeah, they, right. And, and so all the animals eat corn. Why? I grew up on a farm. So, so why do you think we gave them corn? It's cheap. Yeah, it's cheap, it's cheap and you, they get fat. <laughs> so you, what do you think is going to happen to you? I mean, corn's a lectin. It's inflammatory. It makes you fat. So what about like the China study? That was like that huge epidemiological yeah, study. Here's my problem with the China study. It really wasn't, the, it, the, the research that was done, it, the book is an interpretation by a radical vegetarian. <laughs> so right off the bat, it's, if you look at, there's a lot of bias built into the, the, the trials. And, and well, I should say the interpretation of the data is extremely biased. There's a guy named Chris Master John. Uh, he's really uh, 
he's, uh, his website is Chris Master John PhD, and, and uh, he, he talks about it all the time. And, and my take is, is you know, we need to do animal products in moderation, okay? But exactly. We, but, but right, like anything else in life. I, I just think it, there's just too much, too much, too much bias. I, I think some people, certain people, may do fine. I was just gonna say, does yeah. that go back to maybe that idea of the microbiome? And yeah. Some people can't eat meat. You, and some someone like you, and you know, that, that you're having stuff. this. I, I would check into that biome, B I O M E, uh, and, and look, look and see what it says. Because they, they actually tailor a, a, a diet for you. That's too. the guy that did the research. Um, his company is called Day Two, like T W O, and they do the same thing. You send in a stool yeah. sample, and then they right. they analyze it, and then based on the algorithm, they can predict. Yeah. And the thing that's crazy is that like the one guy, he said he sent his in, and they told him he could eat Starbucks brownies that wouldn't spike his yeah. blood sugar, but white rice would just based on the algorithm of, not that he should, right. but the idea of the idea, because yeah. he could absorb fat better with sugar. Right. Something about, anyway, I just thought the whole, I yeah. think that whole well, thing Well, like I said, yeah, I think you know, to, to, to me, elimination diets are the way to go if you're really uh, doing it, but I gotta go by what I know. <laughs> and what I know is these things have the potential to be really, really harmful to, to most people. And to, I, I can tell you, when, when, I, when I get on it and I do it, I feel better. I lose weight. Mm -hmm. uh, I have, uh, I'm a total knee candidate mm -hmm. because of my football days. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let your kids play that game. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bad idea. But, but yeah, my knees feel better, everything, my joints yeah. feel better. Wow. Yeah. So you're not anti-grain if it's like sprouted or prepared in a Yeah, I, I, to, to be honest, because I work with the sick, oh, like gotcha. a lot of auto, if they're autoimmune, that's off the table. Now, someone else, but the problem is it's insidious. We don't know when it's going to rear its ugly head as far as the effects, right? You could eat, some people could eat grain and feel fine, uh, and they could keep eating grain, they could feel fine for years. And then all of a sudden, hmm, got digestive issues, you know, finds out, you know, their lipopolysaccharides are leaking into their bloodstream. And then Monsanto didn't help them. The problem either by spraying all the wheat. Glyphosate. Yeah, that that's the evil yeah. empire. Yeah. And I mean yeah. evil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I am I'm friends with a lady named uh, Stephanie Steneff. I know her. And I, I would say friends. I mean, we're acquaintances. Uh, we've interviewed her. Um, she's a researcher at MIT. And she's a data person. The correlation between GMOs and glyphosate and geographically throughout the country and relating it to different disease patterns, autism, cancer, heart disease, it's almost 100% correlation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These people know it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, well now it's Bayer, you know that, right? Bayer bought Monsanto, so now they're the evil, evil empire. <laughs> now by the way, one of the worst things you can do for your gut health for to cause leaky gut is take uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. That's like throwing a hand hand grenade into your stomach. <laughs> what if that's the only way you can function? Like, how do you know? Because I can't, <laughs> because I can't physically get out of bed when I'm menstruating unless I yeah. take ibuprofen. It's the only way I can like work and function. Yeah. Well. <laughs> But if I fix my diet, then in theory, maybe that yeah. would fix all of that stuff. Absolutely. That's the idea of that. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, PCOS, endometriosis, menstrual difficulties, blood sugar. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to blood sugar. So whether or not they're telling you the grain's okay for you or whatever, you feel okay, promise you it's causing all kinds of female problems. Can I ask you one question, Joe? Um, I know that you, I, I don't like the word diet. It just doesn't seem to cook with me. But the Mediterranean diet, which is a very healthy way of eating. They, they did take the uh, pyramid and turn it upside down. Right. Uh, do you feel like that's a fairly good place for people to start to, to, to work on that? And what do you object to what's in it or not in it? Here's my take. <laughs> the only way you're going to get massive results is to take massive action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that's like sticking your toes. I, I, I see people all the time as well. I'll do this, but I won't do that, or I'll do this. I don't work with those people because I know the consequences. I've seen it in my family. With not, I mean, my brothers weren't willing to do anything. <laughs> I wish they would have done the Mediterranean diet. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But when I work with someone, I'm a benevolent dictator. Wait a minute, we already okay. have one of those here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Mr. Paul Buckingham, you, you have not met yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I'd love to say, you know, that's okay, but but what I know about, you know, lectins and these other things. Because they're in there. Yeah, yeah they, they allow certain things like that. Yeah. Now, it's, everything's on a continuum, right? Is some things better than others? Well, I used to think whole wheat was better than white bread. Mm -hmm. We all did. And yeah. now it's now we're finding it's worse. Yeah. Because of the wheat germ and gluten. Right. Mm -hmm. What about apple cider vinegar? What's your feeling about that? That's good. Mm -hmm. So who was talking about protein assimilation? Okay. So one of the things. So one of, one of the things you look on your. I teach blood chemistry analysis to other doctors too. Uh, functional blood chemistry analysis. Forget about the blood chemistry you get from your doctor and their lab report. They're next to useless because they're a geographical bell curve analysis, meaning they're an average of all the sick people that live in that area. Okay, so what we want is ranges that are going to identify, you know, those reference ranges. We're going to we want optimum ranges. When you're leaving that, we got to address it there. So when you look at your blood work, and I'm going to guess you have abnormal protein numbers in your blood work. Your total protein and your uh, globulin, that's what you want to look at. And what I can do is I can put it in a functional range and see if you're high or low. And if you're high or low, that typically means you have a lack, your stomach is not making enough hydrochloric acid. Mm -hmm. When you can't make enough hydrochloric acid, do you have uh, reflux? Okay, have you ever had reflux? Years Heartburn. Ago I did. Years ago I did, but I okay. Yeah, so, what, so we, but we see this all the time with, with hypothyroid, uh, very, very common. Folks, that affects everything. What I mean, when you have... What your pH with the apple cider vinegar? Would well, it, it, it does have an effect on pH, but it, that, that's not where it does its stuff, okay? It does its stuff by breaking down the protein mm -hmm. and assist your body in, in breaking it down. Okay. So then you can assimilate it. So mm -hmm. those, those protein numbers are very key. Okay, yeah, uh, you know, it, uh, when you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, that shuts down your methylation pathways, uh, and you know that that affects genetic expression. Okay, so um, it can it can it can cause different types of anemias. It can mess your liver up. But yeah, apple cider vinegar. Uh, I typically like that, uh, uh, but people have uh, don't necessarily like the taste of apple cider vinegar. And so they, uh, I, I tell them, get some betaine Lemon. HDL. Lemon, too? Yeah, le lemon's fine, but it's not going to have the same effect. It, the same effect. Don't confuse alkalizing with, you know, because lemon and apple cider vinegar actually uh, uh, alkalize their blood. Right. Yeah, right. It's the opposite of what you think. Yeah, right. But I'm interested in the effect that it has in, in digestion and breaking down the protein. Mm 